And there's kind of historical accounts that it weighed like 5,000 million kilos or something. And he's charging along on his horse and he's just holding the thing. In this video, I'm gonna be talking all about the Kung Fu Guandao that we have for sale at Enzo Martial Arts. I'm gonna be talking a bit about its history, some of the features that is on the Guandao that make it a Guandao over other weapons that look very similar. And at the end, I'm gonna give you a few tips and tricks just to get you started training with the Guandao. Hi, my name's Doug Swift. I've been doing martial arts for the past 33 years and the owner of Enzo Martial Arts for the past 16 years. If you're liking this video, subscribe to the channel and get all the latest videos and updates from Enzo Martial Arts. So let's get into this video and learn all about the Kung Fu Guandao. So if you look at the history on this Guandao, it seems to be a little bit vague, but pretty certain that it goes back a couple of thousand years. Now history will say that General Guan Yu invented this weapon and there's kind of historical accounts that it weighed like 5,000 million kilos or something. It was the strongest man on the planet and all the rest of it. Now it does seem to be a battlefield weapon. Now these types of weapons, this style of weapon, pops up in all, all kinds of different places. So the Japanese have their Naganata, there's a Korean version. There's also like various equivalent weapons in European, in European sort of ancient combat as it were. So this type of weapon seems to be something that would just evolve naturally if there's battles and wars continuing for a long time, um, sort of pre-guns. So yeah, actually a, a kind of naturally occurring weapon in ancient battlefields. I personally don't think, I'm not a historian, so like I don't necessarily really allow to have an opinion, but I don't think General Guan Yu invented it, but it's very possible that it came about during the time of him fighting. So maybe it kind of got adapted or he wanted a sp specific shape and that shape stuck, that's very possible. But in terms of this style of weapon, it's very unlikely that he invented it. Now, there are some theories and me and a few buddies and we're sitting around chatting about them as why the, the theories come that they're so heavy. Because actually, if you're holding this thing, you don't want it that heavy. You, you, you want, obviously, you want it to be strong. If, if they are occasionally called horse knives, so like very, very, very gruesomely would like chop legs off horses or bellies out of horses by, by footmen. But it doesn't seem to be a thing that you'd want to be that heavy. Now the only theory we've got is if you've got some general and he's charging along on his horse and he's just holding the thing and he's just kind of running into like rows of like rows of people, maybe then you'd want a really, really heavy weight just to just to have momentum of it. So that might be the reason why this kind of weight myths like come about because if you're going into combat, you do not want a 20 kilo or 30, 40 kilo Guando. It's just gonna be crazy. Now you do see some strong men in China doing demonstrations with these crazy heavy Guandaos and they can barely lift them. Like that, that is not a combat weapon. That is not the type of weapon you're gonna be really wanting to do Kung Fu with in any way. And even training, like, like nowadays, just a set of like a barbell with some weights on it is, is gonna be perfectly good. So I personally think the weighted myth, like once you're getting over sort of even like five, six kilos, is gonna become very, very impractical and become more of a hindrance. Now for training, yes, it's quite good to train with heavy things just for a little bit, just to get used to swinging them around, build up some strength and muscle and technique. But to be honest nowadays, there's so much information out there on like uh, training outside of your sport to get to get strength. Whether you need that or not is arguable and it's just, just a bit of fun. However, now I'm talking about combat. Now the, most of the guandaos that you can buy these days aren't those types of weighted guandaos. So like this one is much more like a performance style guandao. You wouldn't want to be hitting this with anything or clashing or doing any kind of combat combat training whatsoever. Now you do see heavier Guandaos around. They're very expensive. 
really difficult for us to ship and we don't get them in that often. Also, people don't request them that often. The Guandao's that people want these days are these like Wushu performance style Guandao's. So I'll go through a few of the features on this Guandao. You will get, you get the wooden shaft, which on the top you have this very distinctive blade. Now it's much, much thicker than say the Pudao's or the Japanese Naganata, very, very thick. And you get this kind of curved top with the little spike on the back. Also this guard, if you can see the guard has this, it's kind of like a rounded diamond shape and you always see these on Guandao's. The other thing that makes it a Guandao is having a spike on the end and nearly always with the rings attached. Now there's lots of loads of different theories on the rings all across like Chinese martial art like with the swords or the like Guandao's and whatnot but yeah you usually get the rings nowadays they make a nice rattly noise but there are people have got all kinds of different theories but the spike on the end also helps make it a guandao rather than another type of long weapon in Chinese martial arts. These guandaos are extremely thin, so they bend. They don't fully bend, say 90 degrees, but they do bend a bit. So you won't get the kind of snapping that you do out of, say, flexible broadswords, but it, you still get the wobble. So when you're training with it, you can hear that wobble, you can see the blade moving around and flashing about a bit. Now usually the guards are unfixed and this is also pretty much done on purpose. So you get the noise and also the rings make the noise. So for demonstrations like Shaolin and Wushu, which will be most of the people using these specific Wandaos, you want, you want the noise, you want the, you want the sound because it helps with the spectacle, it helps with the demonstration, it makes it more appealing to watch. It's not just Shaolin and Wushu that are going to be using these in the main, there are lots and lots of different Kung Fu styles that are going to be picking them up. So all from Northern styles all the way down to the Southern styles, a lot of these styles will use Guandao as part of their, their syllabus. Now it is a slightly more advanced weapon so you will move on to it later on. but. But yeah, a lot of styles use these Quandaos. Most people that are buying them in the shop are gonna be getting these lighter weight ones. Again, because the heavy ones are just so unwieldy and really, really hard to find. So most people, unless if they're ordering them and getting them specifically made, are gonna be buying these lighter weight Quandaos. These are the Quandaos that we have in at the shop, but they do change a little bit. So for the purpose of the video and for it to, to stretch over time, I just wanted to point out a few variations that there might be with the Guandaos. Now, one of the things is this batch that we had don't have the little bell and horsehair that you get dangling off the end. Now, usually if you've bought one with the dangly horsehair, it comes off after about a week and you constantly put it back, back on again until you just give up. So you usually end up with it just, just a little spike in the hole. But sometimes that happens. This batch that we've currently got in doesn't have them. Um, but yeah, sometimes you will get that. Now, another feature is this. This is wood, which is painted maroon, which is kind of like the standard for a lot of Chinese martial arts weapons. Sometimes it will just come totally plain wood, which has been clear varnished, like the Pudao that we have in the shop at the moment. Sometimes like the shape of the Guanda, I mean, it pretty much forms a shape, but it will be slightly different have a slightly different shape to it. Sometimes there's a little dragon motif. Now with these flexible ones, you don't tend to get the thick brass one, but you might get different designs in this kind of fitting right here on the bottom of the blade. Apart from that, they're pretty much the same all the way through. The spikes tend to be the same for these for these Guandaos. So yeah, that's just a few variations that's worth noting. We will do our best to keep up the pictures on the website so you know exactly what you're buying. Keep an eye out for that because it, this one now might not be the exact one we're selling on the website. So just to give you a few ideas of length, these Guandaos tend to be pretty standard in terms of dimensions. They don't tend to change that much. Obviously, if you're buying the heavier weight ones, they can be a lot, lot longer. But this comes in almost exactly six foot 183 centimeters. Now in terms of just the blade length, like 49 centimeters, sort of 19 and a half, 20 inches. Just having a look at the weight as well. This weighs in it just over one and a half kilos. So lightweight for a historical Guandao, 
but actually a very usable weight and still quite heavy for a long weapon in martial arts. If you want to know all the dimensions, I'll put them all up on the website, all the possible different measurements I can think of, so go check that out. Enzo Martial Arts, we have quite a wide range of Chinese martial art weapons, so as well as the Guandaos, we also have the Kung Fu Pudaos. First weapon you'll probably use in Chinese martial arts, the white waxwood kung fu staff. We have a whole range of Chinese broadswords, including the flexible wushu broadsword, and a whole range of straight swords, including the aluminium tai chi sword. So as promised at the beginning of the video, here's a few tips and tricks just to get you started training with a guandao. Now it is ideal if you can start off with other long weapons first, preferably a staff. A lot of Chinese martial arts will start you off on a staff first. So I do definitely recommend training with the staff first before you move on to something like a guandao. However, a lot of the techniques that you'll start with with a guandao will be very similar. So the first one that you want to do is just general spins. Now with these, you want to try and make sure that the blade is going in the right direction. So rather than a stick, which you don't need to concentrate on that so much, you want to make sure that the, the blade is turning so it's cutting through the air all at the same time so you're not so it's an extra thing to think about while spinning the thing extra dimension of spinning but it's something you just want to concentrate on now the other the other technique with the guandao which you will see a lot more often is like reverse spin so cutting up through the air now, Partly because you can get your whole body into it. So it's really, really strong movement. And if these were designed for cutting a cavalry, so mainly horses, that's a really, really strong move where you're coming up underneath the horse. So yeah, these moves are really feature in, in Chinese martial arts for this weapon, for that exact reason, that that is one of the main combat reasons for this. So yeah, it's really good to just get used to it, concentrate in making sure that blade's moving through the air in the right direction. Really good two techniques just to get started with the Guandao. Thanks very much. I hope it was useful. I hope you learned loads about the Kung Fu Guandao that we have for sale at Enzo Martial Arts. If you like this video, remember to subscribe to the channel and get all the latest videos from Enzo Martial Arts. Thanks very much and I'll see you soon. Cheers.